So welcome back to Totally Integrated Instrumentation. Today we're going to have a look at um, the process uh, of making um, alcohol or spirit, um, which is commonly used to make drinks such as whiskey, gin, vodka. Um, but in recent times, during the coronavirus uh, outbreak, the um, spirit or the ethanol that's produced by this process is being used in our hand sanitizers. So you'll see, um, if you've been watching the news, that um, a few of our favorite uh, mass producers of gin and vodka have started making hand sanitizer because they are making the raw ingredient for um, uh, sanitizing. So that's the message. If you run out of hand sanitizer, go and wash your hands with vodka. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the, the processes first. And this is um, a process for making whiskey. So we start off here with these washback tanks. Um, and these are like fermenters. So it's very similar if you're making beer. Um, you would put uh, your, your grain in here and, and you would add your yeast and you would let that ferment for a certain amount of time to create what we call beer. And that beer would then go into what we call the wash still. So we always start up with a wash still. Um, and these are normally uh, copper. Uh, there's various unique selling points for different whiskey manufacturers. Some have a, a, a taller column claiming a smoother taste, etc. Um, but they all work in the same way. They heat the spirit up. We don't want to heat it up too much because what will happen then is it will foam and the foam will come down and, and wreck the product. It starts off, when you start the process, it, it's got a very uh, high chemical content. It's just no good for drinking. So we have to ignore that. So if we put a flow meter on here, rather than monitoring time, we can use um, uh, the quantity as a measurement before we start actually uh, monitoring the process for what we call the cut. So it becomes more repeatable. And what we can do here, we can put a measurement in here that measures the alcohol by volume and we want to cut it. Now that's conventionally done with a floating device called a hydrometer and that will tell you what the alcohol content is and that will switch over and take this 20, 20, 20 to 25 cut and it will store it into the low whites uh, storage. But from there we go on to the next still where we take the low wines, uh, put it into there, heat it again. And what we're trying to do there, again, is increase the alcohol content. So we would have another measurement here, measuring ABV, and we would cut at 30 to 35. Um, once we've got that, we go on to the final still where we take um, what we call from the faints receiver. We put a percentage of faints, a percentage of low wines into the, the final still. And we're looking for a cut uh, above 63%. Ideally, we want something around 71% to go into the spirit receiver. And this will be the final product before it goes away for aging. The bits that we don't use are called the heads and the tails. And that's the same for each of these stills. And that goes back into the faints receiver. Once it's gone into the spirit receiver, it's either shipped off um, by a lorry and that could be going to, to other blenders. So they could be making a, rather than making a single malt whiskey, you could go and be going to a blender where we're blending three different uh, uh, whiskey uh, spirits. Or a lot of the time it goes into oak barrels. Some of them have been uh, old sherry barrels. Um, uh, some of them could be, have been had champagne in whatever, but th that's where a lot of the taste comes from. And they'll go into these barrels a lot of the time for at least 10 years. And during that process, we lose some of the spirit evaporates. And that's commonly referred to as the angel share. Um, so when we're making whiskey, we have uh, a 10 year period until we can actually taste the final product. So the uh, next process is, is similar in a lot of ways to, to whiskey distilling but we are now using something called column stills. Now, column stills are, are normally used for, for uh, mass production. Uh, it's, a, it's a much quicker process. It runs at a higher temperature. Some of these can be running in excess of 70 degrees Celsius. 
Um, if you have a vodka comment column still for it to be labeled up as vodka, the final cut has got to be 90%. So this process here is looking at uh, vodka made from potatoes. So if we look on the left hand side, the potatoes comes into uh, a mash tank and this is goes into uh, uh, fermentation again with your yeast to turn it into beer and then we go into a wash still. So we, we have always the first part is always the wash still and then straight out of the wash still to, to, to get production moving quicker it will probably go straight into the column still and come down and uh, sometimes what we can have is flavor pots in the way so if you're making things like flavored gins in those flavor pots um, coming out here this is what you can see on the, on the left hand side um, you know you might have uh, botanicals or something so the product goes through there and um, then we can bottle it and the beauty of a, a vodka and gin we don't have to age it so as soon as it goes into that bottle as long as the quality is good the master blender is happy with the final product it can go away and it can be shipped and it can be drank so um, making things like uh, gin again we it, it's a this part is probably a similar uh, process um, but we still go into to, to a fermenter we have the beer and then the, the wash still goes into the column still and the here you can see my botanical flavor pots for, for gin on the right hand side uh, and it comes through now the problem here with making an ABV measurement could be that the botanicals add a third element um, which is going to be diff difficult to distinguish between. So a column still is designed for fast production of vodka and gin. Theoretically, it's still making spirits, so you could still make whiskey with it. The argument is the more traditional way of using the posh stills, uh, pot stills, sorry, that we've already seen, is more flavoursome. Okay, so uh, th there's a trade-off here. Um, so those are the, the two methods. We can we still need to, to, to monitor the cut. So, you know, I mentioned vodka, the cut is at 90% um, and, uh, and gin will be down at, in your 60% again. So we still need to monitor that ABV measurement to, to make sure we're getting the right percentage alcohol going to the final product. So if we have a look at um, spirit production, it consists of two elements, ethanol, which is the spirit, and water. And the percentage of ethanol in water has a, has a relationship between temperature and density. And there's a set of um, tables, which are uh, OIML tables or MID tables, where we can see that temperature and the um, density relationship to, to percentage alcohol. So that's the first thing we need to be able to do is first of all, we need to monitor the density and the temperature of the liquid. So if we plot these curves from the OAML table, um, you'll see that the actual curves it themselves, so these are all the different temperature ranges, change direction which can cause a problem with the, the complexity of the formula behind this so if we have a look at the wash still where we need to be able to cut as low as two percent to get the the tail um, and that is in a very defined portion of the curve if we move on to the uh, intermediate still well we're we're going to be measuring and cutting that at about 60%. So we're, we're again, we're on a different portion of the curve. Um, so we really need to, 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 to take that into consideration. We can't have uh, the full curve programmed into a device and expect the same accuracy at the bottom and the top. So normally on site, the way this would function, you would have multiple hydrometers um, and you would look at those for for um, measurements at the low end 
down to two percent and then you would have another one for, for for the cut at the top end and this is going to be the same if we're going to be making these measurements with the Coriolis meter but ideally what we want to do is rather than having all these hydrometers and temperature sensors we want all of these measurements in one flow meter that can switch between these different ranges so you have one flow meter for, for all of your applications on in your distilling process so we'll look at these curves in more detail this is the wash still curve so we need to go down as low as two percent but the cut for low wines is at 25%. Um, there is a slight deviation on the curve at the bottom end. Then the intermediate um, will be, this is again for pot stills, will be cut in at 65, um, but we can start as, uh, as low as 25. So the last curve is for a column still, which is a much higher temperature, 90 degrees Celsius. Uh, for vodka, we'll be cutting at 90% ABV. And if you're using the column still to make uh, whiskey or gin, we'll be cutting around 65% ABV for the final product. So what do we need to, to make the measurements for distilling? Well, the first thing is we need a meter that can measure density. And a Coriolis meter um, is very accurate or can be very accurate at measuring density. They're normally density calibrated and that's done by uh, running water through at different temperatures and that gives us an accuracy for the Siemens meter of 0.5 kilograms per, per meter cubed but a, re a repeatability uh, a much higher factor than that. So that's the first thing we need. So the next thing we need if we go back to our curves to calculate ABV we need a temperature measurement and uh, Coriolis meters uh, contain a temperature sensor which is actually used to uh, compensate the resonant frequency of the metalwork inside but we can use that as part of our calculation we also could do with volume flow and volume totalizing. So remember I said we could use this to, to calculate the head on the wash still rather than doing it with time. So it will give us a much more repeatable um, uh, head and tail uh, with the tail being monitored by the ABV. So once we have these, the final part is to have a meter flexible enough to program multiple ABV curves into there. So from the menu, you can select the ABV curve, as you can see, there's some examples here that you require to use on your process. So you can have one meter for, for all of your distilling applications. But one of the, the nice things that we can do with a Coriolis meter, apart from measuring the ABV, we can totalize the ABV. Um, because we're, we're monitoring the flow rate of ABV, not just the percentage alcohol. So if you are filling road tankers or things like that and you're getting taxed on the ABV, then potentially this type of technology can be used to, to tell you exactly how much alcohol has gone in your road tanker. So this picture here shows uh, um, uh, your safe. Uh, it's been opened, it should be locked because this is what uh, you pay your tax on. But coming out of here or, or feeding this is the Coriolis meter. And I put this on here to highlight one of the issues. And, and, and that is we require back pressure. A Coriolis meter requires back pressure. If we get, especially coming from a column still, uh, uh, high temperature and we've got too much back pressure or not enough back pressure, we, the, the liquid is actually going to vaporize inside the flow meter and cause us issues. Um, and normally this flow is, is not pumped, it's gravity fed because it's coming straight from the, the still or the column still or the pot still. So there's, there's not much pressure there. So we can't put too much of a uh, disturbance on the flow rate. So we do have to do some calculations and be clever on our installation. But here at Siemens, we've been working close with a lot of uh, distillery customers over the last four or five years. And we have a lot of experience in, in getting these installations in right and getting a very reliable ABV measurement. So there you have it, an introduction to, to alcohol by volume and how we make the measurement with Coriolis meters. I hope you found it useful and thanks for listening.